All right, so I reached a thousand subscribers about a week ago and uh, I'm really happy about that. I wanted to thank you guys for subscribing. Um, I, I set out a goal, I said, okay, in three months, I wanna reach a thousand subscribers. Um, I did fitness videos in the past and I was like, you know what, I think I can do a much better job with tech videos. And I started doing it and I noticed a lot, a lot of people were subscribing and people liked the material and the content I was putting out. Um, I always had questions. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I want to know, can this laptop run this game? You know, is it better than this particular laptop? Why would it be better? Should I get this versus that? And I was like, you know what? People are going to like this. They're going to enjoy this. So I set out to make videos for you guys. Um, but I did the test. I got the thousand subscribers in three months like I wanted which means that I'm gonna take YouTube even more seriously. Um, and I want to reinforce to you guys that I do pay attention to your comments. I read all of them more than once. I even document everything you guys say because I have like a little spreadsheet and you know, who says what and, and you know, how many people want me to do this versus this. And you know, I weigh my options and then I pick something and I make a video about it. Um, but I want you guys to know that I, I've, I've got a few laptops coming so we should be talking more about different games and different laptops being tested um, but overall this is just me telling you that I'm making a commitment to YouTube to stay on here to continue to make videos for you guys and so here I am I'm gonna do q and I'm gonna answer some of the most popular questions that people have um, and I want you guys to, to listen to these because if you have questions about the MacBook or which one you should get it's gonna be pretty important that you understand what kind of like core things people are thinking about out there and the kind of answer that I'm gonna give you because I've had these MacBooks, I've used them, so I kind of know a little bit more than most people and I wanted to share that with you guys. So let's take a look at some of the more popular questions here and we'll kind of dissect them and talk about them. Um, and if you have more questions during the video, leave them up below here because I'm gonna answer all of them personally. So um, another thing, uh, I want to do a live event pretty soon here, but I'm not sure how it's going to work or how to do it or anything like that. So um, we'll do that pretty soon here. And uh, yeah, um, there should be big changes coming to the channel. Basically, I want to rebrand it a little bit more. I want to have like a Twitter, Facebook, a few other things, uh, just so it makes it easier for you guys to connect. Because there was a few people who wanted to reach out to me on Facebook, but you know, I didn't really have my Facebook set up for that. Um, and so I was like, eh, I have to, you know, I have to create a separate Facebook page for that. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into some questions here. And uh, I really want to help you guys out. Remember, this channel is about you guys. It's about you guys wanting to understand the technology and basically, you know, dominate your digital lifestyle. You know what I mean? All right, let's get to it. All right, so a lot of people ask me this question on this channel. Which MacBook is best for gaming? Should they get a gaming laptop? Should they get the MacBook Air? Uh, should they get the MacBook 12 inch version? You know, what, what should they get? I mean, you can get yourself a gaming laptop, but it's gonna be thick and it's gonna be ugly and it won't be Apple. So you probably don't wanna do that. Um, so the question is, what, what do you want to do? Um, what I can tell you is, so the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, they pretty much perform the same in gaming. Um, now, you know, the, the Pro is gonna perform maybe like five to 10% better, but most of the time, they're pretty much the same. The 12 inch MacBook can do even less gaming than the Pro and the Air. And a lot of people already say that the Air and the Pro is not a gaming laptop. Now, what I can tell you is, MacBooks in general, they're not considered gaming laptops. But because we've seen these new integrated graphics chips come out, like the HD 5000, the HD 4000, which came out like in 2012, and now the HD 6000 and the new Intel Iris Graphics 6100, we can actually do light gaming on the MacBooks. You know, this was completely unheard of in the past, and not a lot of people talk about this. Um, but if you wanna know what is the best MacBook to game on, it's gonna be the 15 inch MacBook Pro with dedicated graphics. Now, what does that mean, dedicated graphics? Well, you have integrated graphics in the base model of the 13 inch uh, Pro and Air and the 12 inch, they're all integrated graphics. The HD 6000, the Intel Iris 6100, those are all integrated. Now, dedicated graphics means there's a separate chip on the laptop that does graphics that's like a much bigger chip 
that kind of specializes in graphics. It's a lot more powerful. It could be about five to 10 times more powerful than you'd see something that's integrated in the actual CPU. So what I can tell you is that if you want a game, get the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the new AMD graphics. If you want to save money and you still want a game uh, on the 15 inch Pro, get yourself last year's 2014 model. That one's a little bit older. It's not going to have the touch force technology, but it is going to be able to run games pretty similar. There hasn't been that much difference between the, the, the Nvidia GT 750M, which is what's in the 2014 edition. Uh, versus the the new AMD graphics that's in the 2015. There's really not a whole lot of difference in gaming. Um, realistically, if you are a serious gamer and you want to game, get yourself a gaming laptop. But don't don't lie to yourself the, the limits uh, of integrated graphics because what I'm proposing to everybody is that the integrated graphics have limits and that they're for light gaming. And the cool thing is you can play most of your games and it's considered for light gaming. It's not supposed to be like this crazy gaming laptop, but with all things considered, I do believe you can game on this on, on the, these new MacBooks. Um, it is light gaming, keep that in mind, but uh, all things considered, it's pretty impressive because we like Apple, we like what they do, we like the Apple support, we like the build quality of the, of the Apple products, we like the way the look and feel of Apple products. We just want them to game a little bit better. And that's what we've seen with the new integrated graphics and with the new MacBook Pro 15 inch, the $2,500 version, which has a dedicated graphics card. Um, having said all those things, um, pretty much any MacBook's gonna play games, but the 15 inch with the AMD graphics is the best. So this is another question that I get a lot of time. What applications can the MacBook Air run? Well. The MacBook Air can pretty much run all applications. I mean, there's really not any one application you kind of point at and say, well, it can't really run that. Um, but the real question is, how well is it gonna run those applications? So a lot of people ask me, can you do video editing on the MacBook Air? Uh, the answer is yes, you can. I've done a lot of, I've edited most of my videos on the MacBook Air and it does a pretty good job. Only thing to consider is that the, com the compile time takes a little bit longer. Um, what that means is that when you're rendering the video, it just takes a little while to wait a little bit, but you can still video edit. Uh, if you can video edit, that also means you can do photo editing as well on the MacBook Air. Um, and like earlier that you've seen the channel, you can do light gaming on the Air as well. So basically the MacBook Air and the Pro can pretty much do just about everything. You can do 3D modeling, um, you can make movies. I mean, what, what else out there is, is difficult to run? Um, Whatever it is, you can pretty much throw it at the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro, and they're gonna they're gonna do pretty good. Um, the only MacBook you need to kind of worry about is the 12-inch MacBook because it's got power, but it can't it can't sustain that power for a very long time. So it pretty much after about five minutes of using it, kind of slows down a little bit because it has no fan. It's preventing core meltdown, so it throttles a little bit. Um, but for basic things like web browsing, the 12-inch MacBook's great. Uh, let's see what else we got here. People are asking me, should they get the i7 or should they get the eight gigabyte of RAM? What's more important for gaming? Um, well, when you're, when you're building your MacBook Air or you're building your MacBook Pro and you wanna know what to upgrade, I suggest getting the eight gig RAM. And here's, here's, here's why. Uh, well, with the eight gig RAM, a lot of times when, with just four gigs, you're, you're at the ceiling. You're really close to using just about all of your RAM. And so when you're playing a game, a game is going to be kind of going above your limits, maybe a little bit below your limits. So having that double RAM is really going to help you out um, when you're playing games or when you're running software and applications. Um, getting an i7 processor is good and dandy. You might get 5% better performance, but overall on all the tests I've done, you really don't notice that great of a difference with an i7. Um, you should notice a bigger difference in the Pro, in the MacBook Pro, but in the MacBook Air, you don't really see that big of a difference. I don't really know why. I don't know what's up with that. Really, really odd. Um, let's see what else we got here. Mm. Okay, so this question I get asked almost every day, um, and that's how hot does the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro get? Um, out of all the laptops that Apple sells, the MacBook Air is gonna get 
pretty much the hottest. Now what I've noticed is it doesn't, the MacBook Air isn't gonna get so hot that it's gonna get in the way of you utilizing your MacBook Air. Now what this means is when you're typing on it and when you're playing games and you have the, and the fan spinning and it's pretty loud, it means that as it's doing all that, you don't need to worry about the heat burning you, you don't need to worry about the heat breaking the laptop or breaking the video card in there or any of that kind of stuff. You're gonna be just fine. People get worried because in the past a lot of laptops were built somewhat poorly where if you were to play a game, the laptop would get so hot that it would start melting the keyboard or it would start to smell, or it would start to smoke up and then eventually the laptop would be broken. Now, the MacBooks were designed pretty good quality. I don't think you guys need to worry about any of it overheating or breaking. Uh, I mean, it's got a fan there for a reason and the fan I've noticed it kicks up, but it still works. So leads me to the next question that you guys keep asking me pretty much every other day at least, at least once is, um, how loud do the MacBooks get? Um, well, I can tell you, the MacBook Air is definitely the loudest one out of the bunch. It's got a small tin little fan that's just like Zzz. So it's gonna get it's gonna get fairly loud, but personally for me, I don't feel like the, like the sound or the heat gets in the way of me using the laptop. Now, that's my opinion. That doesn't mean that same thing is gonna, it's gonna mean for you. How loud do you need it to be in your room? Like, is there some kind of threshold limit where if it passes this many decibels, you can't use this laptop. You won't buy this laptop. Uh, if that's the case, you know, leave a comment below. I can probably record how loud the fan gets and, and get back to you guys on that. Um, but on the MacBook Pro, the fan it doesn't get very loud. It's about maybe 50% loudness of the air. The same thing with the heat. The, the MacBook Pro doesn't get very hot either. Um, it's only usually the airs that get hot and get somewhat loud, but again, all things considered, most laptops are gonna get hot and loud anyway. Um, and with a laptop, you need to be realistic and, and that's kind of the realism that we're dealing with today. Um, they're just gonna get hot, they're gonna get loud. Unless you were to get yourself the 12 inch MacBook, which doesn't really get hot, it doesn't really get loud because it has no fan, um, then you wouldn't have to worry about that. But then you have to worry about, you know, do I have enough performance? So let's see what other questions you guys are asking me what's the upgradability like? And we've seen a general trend where we're stepping away from upgradability with laptops. And that's just due to how thin and sleek they are. I mean, there's there's really, if, if you could upgrade these devices, they wouldn't be as thin and sleek. So consumers made a choice, I'd say roughly around two to four years ago-ish, that they don't value upgradability as much. And they what they value more is ease of use, thin, sleek devices that feel good to use. And that's and that's kind of what all these uh, MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros are all about. They're thin, they're sleek, they're easy to use, and they're nice. Um, when you add the upgradability factor, you're adding a factor of complexity and uncertainty that people kind of don't like. Um, and because of this, you know, people are like, okay, well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna upgrade my RAM. They're gonna go, they're gonna waste time upgrading it. Uh, people want convenience. They just want everything to work. They want one solid piece. That's kind of what we chose as a society based on our purchasing and, and how we think about computers. Personally, me, I would like to be able to upgrade the CPU, the RAM and all that. But when I look back in the past, it's not like I, I upgraded that much of my laptops or or, or even my, my computer, my desktop hardware. Usually it's like I need a new computer, just build a whole new computer. Um, yeah, however, it is nice. Um, to just you know upgrade a few things. I think a long, long time ago, like in the early 2000s, where it sort of mattered more to people. Like in the 2000s, you were like, okay, a new game is gonna be coming out in 2004, it's 2002, and Half-Life 2 comes out, now I need to have a Giga RAM. Go and you buy a Giga RAM, you put it in your computer, and everything's fine and dandy. Now you build a computer and well, it just works. There's you know, in a year or two, your computer doesn't become obsolete like it did in the early 2000s, where you had 256 RAM and now all of a sudden now you need a gig because things have just expanded like crazy. Um, it's just not like that anymore. 